triaxial procedure. Please note that all valves mentioned should be opened or closed slowly and with caution so as to not shock the sample and skew the results or damage components. Stage 1. Step 1.1. Filling of the de-airing water tank setup. Fill the tank with distilled water by using the vacuum pump to draw water up into the tank. Fill the tank to about halfway. Step 1.2. De-airing the water tank setup. Close the valve labeled de-aired water inlet on the main valve control panel. Open the valve labeled vacuum supply. Close the valve labeled vacuum release. Turn on the vacuum pump. Let it run to full vacuum and let it run for 10 to 15 minutes. After 15 minutes turn the vacuum pump off. Close the valve labeled vacuum supply. Very slowly bleed off the vacuum by opening the valve labeled vacuum release. Warning. Please note that opening this valve quickly will damage the water tank severely and can lead to serious injury. After the vacuum has been bled off the water tank is now de-aired. Make sure the valve labeled vacuum release is fully opened before moving to the filling stage. Step 1.3 Filling of the bladders Before filling, close all valves on the main valve panel. Open valves A1 and A2. Turn the knob under each valve counterclockwise until you can no longer feel any resistance. Open the valve labeled de-aired water inlet on the main valve control panel. Open valves labeled B1 and D1. Open the bleed valve on bladder 1. Slowly fill the bladder and make sure to remove all the bubbles through the bleed valve hole on the top. To ensure all bubbles are removed lightly shake bladder 1 and observe under the top plate for any mist or trapped bubbles. Once all the air is out close the bleed valve fully. Do the same for bladder 2. Stage 2. Step 2.1. Preparing the sample for testing. Slowly trim or cut the sample out using the cutting tube tool and its companion tools. Move slowly and carefully. Continue to cut or trim away the soil until about 1 mm protrudes. Carefully trim away the excess soil until both sides of the sample are perfectly flat. Take care when scraping the ends so you don't force the clay to form a seal. Keep the ends rough as shown. Use the wooden spacer along with the top part of the cutting tube to slowly extrude the sample from the cutting tube. Measure the diameter height and weight of the sample before the test. Measure the weight and the thickness of the membrane. Check to see if the membrane has any visible damage. Use the membrane stretcher tool and insert a membrane into the tool. Next stretch the membrane over each end of the tool so that the membrane covers the inside of the tool. The membrane should stretch out evenly over the tube of the tool with no wrinkles. Lower the membrane stretcher very carefully over the exposed sample. Gently roll the membrane off the tool and over the sample. The sample can now be transported safely. Take some of the trimmings to get a moisture content of the sample before the test. Step 2.2 Placing the sample on the pedestal Place a porous disc on the pedestal followed by filter paper. Gently place the sample on the filter paper and porous disc and pull the membrane over to the base. Place two O-rings at the base to ensure a good seal of the membrane to the pedestal. Place filter paper on top of the sample followed by the porous disc. Separately stretch an O-ring using the O-ring stretcher. Pass the top cap through the stretcher and O-ring and set the stretcher over the sample. This step will help you to get the top O-ring over the top cap and membrane without also pinching the small tube running around the sample connected to the top cap. Gently place the top cap on the sample. Stretch the membrane over the top cap. Run the stretcher up the sample until it sits over the top cap. Place one O-ring on the top cap to ensure a good seal. Gently lower the outer housing of the cell over the sample. Take care that the top piece of the loading ram just barely touches the top cap. Screw down tightly the three outer housing nuts. Careful not to over-tighten them. Step 2.3. Placing the cell into the loading frame. Make sure the loading frame is in the home position. Press the left arrow on the loading frame control panel to move to home position. Place the entire cell assembly on the loading frame. Lower the top part of the loading frame by use of the two large nuts on either side. Slowly lower it until it's near the loading ram top. There should still be room for the steel ball. Place the steel ball between the top of the loading ram and the frame assembly. Lower just enough so you can no longer take the ball out. The ball should still be able to rotate though. Tighten all four of the large nuts at the top of the frame assembly. Stage 3. Step 3.1. Data Logger. Open the Datacom app on desktop. Wait for the Datacom app to connect and show a green light. Click on Triaxial to see the live readings. Test the vertical LVDT manually. Screw the LVDT onto the top of the cell assembly. Step 3.2 Filling of the cell To fill the cell first open the bleed valve at the top of the cell assembly. Close all the valves at the base of the cell. Close all the valves on the main valve control panel. Turn on the digital pressure transducer. Slowly open the valve labeled de aired water inlet. You should now see a KPA reading on the transducer. Write down this reading. 
This is the falling head pressure from the water tank above. Connect the pipe from valve labeled C1 to the base of the cell to the valve labeled P. Connect the pipe from valve labeled C2 to the base of the cell to the valve labeled sample inside. Slowly open valve labeled B1 and C1. Slowly open the valve at the base of the cell labeled P. Water should now slowly be filling the chamber if the bleed valve at the top of the cell is open. Slowly allow the chamber to fill and make sure to remove all the air bubbles. Note that you might have to tilt the cell over slightly with the high spot at the bleed valve hole. If this is the case you will first need to undo step 2.3. Tilt over the cell and get the bubble out and then redo step 2.3. Once all the bubbles have been removed close the bleed valve on the top of the cell. Close the valve at the base of the cell labeled P. Close all the valves on the main valve control panel. Step 3.3. Pressurizing the bladders in the cell. Start by opening valves labeled A1, B1, D1, and C1. You should now see a reading on the digital pressure transducer. Very slowly turn the knob under the A1 valve clockwise to increase pressure to bladder 1. Close valve labeled B1 once desired pressure has been achieved. Next open the valves labeled A2, B2, D2, and C2 now. Very slowly turn the knob under the A2 valve clockwise to increase pressure to bladder 2. Close the valve labeled B2 once desired pressure has been achieved. Some notes on pressures. Bladder 1 should always be at a higher pressure than bladder 2 by about 10 kPa. For example, a 50 kPa unconsolidated undrained test the bladder 1 pressure will be at 50 kPa while bladder 2's the pressure will be at 40 kPa or a 35 kPa unconsolidated undrained test the bladder 1 pressure will be at 35 kPa while bladder 2's pressure will be at 25 kPa. Once both bladders are at the desired pressures very slowly open the valve at the base of the cell labeled P. Next slowly open the valve labeled sample inside. Wait 15 to 30 minutes for soft clay soils and 10 to 20 minutes for more granular soils. Stage 4. Starting a test. Familiarize yourself with paragraph 7 of the ASTM D2850-15. Pay extra attention on procedures and strain rates and stroke limits. With the Datacom app already open, right-click on Triaxial and click Start Test. A window should pop up called Test Settings. Click on Polynomial. Change the AE value to 0.1. Change the B value to 1. Next move to the loading frame and change the settings as follows. Stroke rate equals 1 mm per minute for very soft clays or 0.3 mm per minute for granular soils. Stroke limit equals 20 mm. Before starting the axial strain move back to the data acquisition system. Click start and select a location to save the data and name it. Move back to the loading frame and start the device. Some notes. Softer clay soil is typically tested at higher pressures. 50 kPa then 100 kPa and 200 kPa for unconsolidated undrained tests. Soft clays are also tested at a faster shear rate of 1 mm per minute. More brittle granular soil is typically tested at lower pressures. 35 kPa then 70 kPa then 140 kPa for unconsolidated undrained tests. Brittle or granular materials are tested at a slower shear rate of 0.3 mm per minute. The maximum particle size can be calculated as follows. 1 6 the sample diameter. D divided by 6 equals 50 mm divided by 6 equals 8.33 mm. This is what a typical UU setup looks like. This is what a typical UU test looks like sped up. UU tests are quick tests. The triaxial can also be used to conduct two other tests, namely, a consolidated undrained test also called a CU test, and a consolidated drain test also called a CD test. Both the CU and CD tests make use of the volume changer and pore pressure transducer. Guides for both CU and CD tests will be made available.